Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMummy.com and today I want to show you how to make a professional looking piped and zippered pillow cover. One of my most popular videos from a few years ago was how to sew a professional looking piped and zippered pillow cover. However, I have learned a lot in my three and a half ish years here on YouTube on how to make better videos. So I wanted to redo this tutorial now that I know more about video. So today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful pillow cover just like this. What I love about these is that they have this really professional looking piping on the edges, plus they have this fantastic zipper opening right here. So you can easily change these out. I usually make my easy pillow covers. I'll leave a link to those in the description box below. They're just really, really quick when I'm on a time crunch, but these are definitely my favorite ones to make. If I have the time, they're the easiest to change out. And I think they are the most beautiful and professional looking pillow covers if you have the time to sew them. So let's get started. You're going to need some cotton decor fabric, a rotary cutter, a marker, a straight edge, a cutting mat, a zipper, and some piping. I found my fabric at my local fabric store, but I'll leave some links in the description box below to some other beautiful watercolor fabric. So you're going to need to cut two squares of fabric that are the same size as your pillow insert, and then two squares of fabric that are one inch shorter than your pillow insert, but the same width, and then two rectangles of fabric that that are two inches high by the same width as your pillow insert and then you're going to need to cut some strips of fabric that are one and a half inches wide and then that are a little bit longer than the perimeter of your cushion. I'm going to leave all these measurements in the description box below so that everything is nice and clear so just make sure to refer to that if you get confused. I'm just showing you now how I prefer to cut my fabric for cushions. I use a straight edge and I use a marker to mark out my square piece of fabric. And then I use a rotary cutter, a straight edge, and my cutting mat to cut my fabric nice and straight. And then if I'm making multiple cushion covers, I'll just use my first cuts as kind of a pattern or a reference to make the rest of my cuts. To cut my piping pieces, so the long one and a half inch wide pieces to cover up my piping, I just make a little slit at one and a half inches on my fabric and then I just tear it. So this will work for any sort of woven fabric if you want to do it nice and quickly. You'll just have to remove the excess strings that end up on your fabric with your hands. So I'm going to start with making the piping, the covered piping. If you need to sew pieces of piping together, here's the method that I use. I put two pieces of piping fabric together at a right angle like this, right sides together, and then I sew diagonally across them just like this. So this creates a nice transition from one fabric strip to the other so you don't have a bulge in between where the seam is showing. When you have a diagonal seam, it makes less of a bulge on your piping. So this is kind of my secret, secret method to making nice transitions on my piping fabric. So here I'm just showing you a close-up. You see how I'm stitching diagonally across the fabric pieces like this and it makes this nice diagonal seam when you're attaching two pieces of piping fabric together. So again you're going to want your strip to be a little bit longer than the entire perimeter of your cushion cover. Next put your piping inside this long piece and fold the fabric in half over your piping and you're going to sew really close to the piping using a piping or a zipper foot on your sewing machine. So this type of foot is one that only has one side, so there's no other side to your foot and you can put your piping or your zipper through just like this. So I'm just using a zipper foot and just sewing all along my piping to close the fabric up and over that piping. Next you're going to take your largest piece of fabric, so I'm making 20 inch pillow cover, so I have this 20 by 20 inch piece of fabric, and you're going to pin the piping all along the perimeter just like this, and you want the salvage edge to the outside. 
So just pin it all along the perimeter and I like to cut little slits on the corners of my piping just on the salvage so that they turn around my corners nicely. And the more pins the better for this step because it's a little tricky to sew the piping on. Here's how I attach my pieces of piping together at the raw edges. So I make sure that there's a couple inches of overlap on my piping here on the ends and then I open up one of the sides to just where my piping ends on that first side on the left and then I'm going to trim off the excess interior piping here with some scissors so that the piping just joins it butt joins right here and then I fold over the excess fabric just like this about half an inch I tuck one piece of piping inside like this turn the other piece over top and then I pin it in place and that just creates a nice join where my piping meets so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my piping on the perimeter of my pillow cover just like this. Again, I'm using that piping foot where it only has one side so that the piping can glide nicely alongside the right side of my machine just like this. And go nice and slow to make sure that you get that piping sewn on nicely. I find the trickiest part of these pillow covers are the corners, so just getting that piping to to curve nicely around the corners and making sure I catch all the fabric. So go nice and slowly on the corners. Take your time. If you have to hand crank your sewing machine wheel to get around the corners nicely, definitely do that. I do for sure. So just sew the piping all the way around the perimeter of your cushion cover top, just like this. Next, I'm going to work on the back, which is the zippered section of my cushion cover. So I fold the next biggest piece over, so the edge that is, uh, in my case, 20 inches wide for my 20 inch pillow form. I fold it over half an inch and press it. And then that little piece that's only two inches high by the width of your pillow form, turn over one of those edges half an inch and press that as well. This is the start of my zipper closure. Next, you're going to want to sew just about two to three inches of the ends of these together. So I'm placing that small piece right sides together with that larger piece and I'm just sewing about two to three inches a seam those together on either end. And this is just going to kind of keep my zipper in, in place and enclose my zipper and create the beginning of that seam. So I did one side and now I am doing the other side, right sides together, small piece and big piece. And I'm just sewing about two to three inches uh, along the side. So here's how that looks. You see, I just have the ends sewn together. Now I take my zipper, which is in my case, slightly shorter than the width of my pillow cover. And I'm placing it underneath this little seam I've created. And I am going to pin that very carefully in place. So you want to make sure that your seam is centered over the center of your zipper and pin it as much as you need to to make sure that you sew this zipper on straight. And you want to make sure that your pieces are butted right together so that you have a really nice finished look. Next, I'm going to sew my zipper in place. So I'm just sewing about a quarter inch on either side of the zipper. Again, I'm using that zipper or that piping foot to make sure that my foot glides along my zipper nicely. And again, here, just go nice and slow so that you don't catch that zipper and your seam is nice and straight. So I sew along one side of the zipper and then next I'm going to flip this piece around and sew on the other side. And this keeps the zipper in place. Next, I'm going to take that top piece with the piping sewn on, put it right side up, and then take my bottom piece with the zipper sewn in, place that right side down and pin those two pieces together. So begin by pinning them together at the corners and then pin them along the sides as much as you need to to make everything nice and secure so that you're ready to sew your final seam. 
Again, using that piping foot, you're going to sew everything together. This is the final step. So you have a sandwich, basically your top piece and your bottom piece of your pillow with the piping in between and go nice and carefully along this edge. You want to make sure that you're going really, really close to that piping so that you don't have any seams or any stitches showing when you turn everything right side out. Again, I find the corners very difficult on these, so just go nice and slow to make sure you're catching all of the fabric pieces. There's going to be three fabric pieces that you're going to need to catch very carefully. And again, use hand cranking and go really slow if you need to, to make that corner nice and smooth. Sometimes I need to go over my corners a couple times just to catch all that fabric and make the corner look nice and smooth. So don't be afraid to do that if you need to do that as well. So once you've sewn all the way around the pillow, all the fabrics are sewn together, you can clip those corners. This helps make the corners nice and smooth and not bunchy looking. And then you can just sort of open your zipper up a little bit like this and turn the entire pillowcase right side out. Now is a good time just to double check your corners to make sure you've caught all your fabric. If you didn't, then just go ahead and sew over the corners again. And if you did, just continue turning that pillowcase right side out. So I like to make my pillowcases uh, slightly smaller than my pillow inserts. So you might remember my fabric sizes were 20 inches wide and my pillow inserts 20 inches wide. And once I have all my seams in my pillow cover is going to be basically a full inch smaller than my pillow insert and I really like that look because it looks nice and full so that's what I would recommend when you're making your own pillowcase as well and here is how this beautiful piped and zippered professional looking pillowcase turned out again I love how these look and I think they're definitely a great project if you have the time. I love this fabric. I love how it looks on my studio back deck. If you want to see more photos of my new studio back deck, you can check out my blog post about that. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching this pillow cover tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments below if you would ever try to sew one of these pillow covers. Again, I will leave a link in the description box below to some of my easier pillow cover tutorials if you prefer to do the quicker or faster methods that I have. But again, this one is definitely my favorite one and I hope you love it too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas. Bye.